It's time for Recipe of the Day. Happy Friday. We made it. And I don't know about you, but at some point this weekend, I'm having a Bloody Mary and it's going to be a pickle juice Bloody Mary. Why? Because I love pickles and I always have pickle juice in the fridge and I love finding ways to use it. So this pickle juice Bloody Mary is like your classic Bloody Mary, but with some pickle juice mixed in and there's also some dry dill around the rim. It just brings it all together and brings so much flavor to the whole drink. Now, I'm explaining how to make one serving, but if you want to make a pitcher that uses up one standard 46-ounce bottle of tomato juice, you know, use the whole bottle up, you're going to want to multiply everything by about five, maybe a little bit more than five, but if you do five and then an extra slug of vodka there, you'll be great. And I'll just say that Ernest Hemingway was a huge fan of Bloody Marys, and he's the one who said it should be made in a pitcher. So I love making up a big batch of Bloody Marys in a pitcher and thinking of Ernest Hemingway. Now, it is best to start with cold ingredients ingredients. So make sure your tomato juice is chilled and that your dill pickle juice is chilled as well. It's also great to have your horseradish, Worcester, and vodka all cold. It all makes a little bit of a difference, especially if you're making a bigger batch. Then you're going to make together the mixture for putting the rim on your glasses. To do that, you're mixing together in a small bowl a little bit of celery salt, black pepper, and the dry dill. Then you transfer that to a small plate and you can get your glasses rimmed now as well. So you take a wedge of lime and you cut a little slit in it and kind of give it a little squeeze just until a little juice is coming out and then run that slit all the way around the top edge of the glass. Then that glass is now wet. So when you invert it and dip it into that mixture of celery, salt, and dill on the plate, it's going to stick on there. Now, everything's going to be ready really soon, so you can put your ice cubes into those glasses now and then set them aside until the actual Bloody Mary mixture is ready. If you're just making one portion, you can do this in a glass measuring cup. You don't want to really use plastic because tomato juice can kind of soak into the plastic a bit, kind of the flavor seeps into it, so it's best to use something glass or metal. If you're just making one, you can use a two-cup measuring cup. If you're doing a pitcher, use a nice big pitcher. And so I'm going to talk through just making the one portion. You're going to add one cup of that chilled tomato juice a quarter cup of the dill pickle juice, a teaspoon of prepared horseradish. And I've told you before that I really like the horseradish that's sold refrigerated. It just has way more flavor than the stuff on the shelf. I don't know why that is. I think it has less preservatives in it and just less diluted flavor in general. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I also love the dill pickles that are sold in the refrigerated section more than the ones in the aisle. Look for those for the pickle juice and for the dill pickle garnish for these. They're going to be the best ones. You're also going in with a quarter teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, a quarter teaspoon of hot sauce, two teaspoons of fresh lime juice, and an ounce of that cold vodka. Give that a nice stir and then pour it into your prepared glass or glasses if you're doing the pitcher. And then for the garnish, I like to do just a dill pickle and a celery stick with an olive and then put like a toothpick or a skewer through that and garnish your glass with that. It's really nice. I'm going to put a link in the show notes to a blog post that I did about different fun garnishes that you can do for Bloody Marys because I think that's always fun. Also, different things on the Bloody Mary rim makes them special. You know what I mean? But that's pretty much it. That is your pickle juice Bloody Mary. Before I sign off, I'd like to ask a quick favor of you. If you have not already, please subscribe to the show. You could do that by heading to cookthestory.com slash R-O-T-D or hitting subscribe on any podcast player that you're using to listen to this show on. I'd also really love it if you could tell the cooking and food lovers of your life about Recipe of the Day and how to find it. The way that we keep funding this business to keep bringing you these podcast episodes and the blog posts and the recipes and all the great ideas is by having visitors to the site and listeners to the podcast. So if you can encourage people to listen, that really helps me out. And I think it'll help them out too, because there's so many great ideas on here. Okay, that is it for today. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. 